What are you doing? Why? Because uh, you look like a tool. Sign that for me. Okay, but I'm not signing my life away, am I? Yeah. Right, this is the first filming of 2020. Um, I'm Kev from sonsofcane.com. This guy here is Chris. And over the Christmas period, a mother got in touch with me to tell me about her son that has a disability and likes the training. So, give me a pen. Da, 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 da. So, we're not going to say who it is, because they wouldn't rename a name anonymous. I know a girl wants to call anonymous. So, at the end of the filming for today, it should probably be about four or five videos. Yeah. Yeah. going to send it to you. If you want one of these hats, signed by both Chris, myself, and the whole team, which includes Callum and Dan. Dan, unfortunately, is not here. He's away in Jersey. Um, on our... When we hit the thousand mark on our subs, we're going to give one away. So keep looking for that. This video is number four in a series of I Bet That Hurts. As usual, the Chris. I see the new year hasn't mellowed you at all. No, no, the drugs are working well. Dearie me. What we're looking at is some pressure points. We may have covered these before, but we're going to do some easily accessible ones for use with your stick and your palm stick if you're into that. If you look at kata, I know a lot of people don't like kata, I love it, but they all apply to pressure point techniques back into the Okinawan system. So it's worth looking into and generally they tend to hurt when you get a hit there. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Normally I'd ring that notification bell, but as you know it's down here. And um, free the fear. And you feel free to free the personality. Okay guys, whether or not you're an advocate of pressure points or not, that, that's a personal choice. Some people are really into them, some people believe they're not real. However, my point is if I've got a nice sturdy bit of wood in my hand, and I strike somebody hard enough, doesn't matter if I hit a pressure point or not. We're going to talk about eight basic points that you can go for. Some of them are vital points and some of them are pressure points, but they're just things you can add to your repertoire that are very simple and easily accessible with your cane, which is the other important thing. So Kev's going to face me because it's about time he did. Center of the forehead, we've got what we call the third eye point on here. So if you remember back to our reverse jab javelin, we've got the striking here, striking and dragging, and then if you've practiced your pokes effectively, you'll get a nice strike in here. If you're using one hand and just a light tap, it's not very nice, as you can see. Where's Dan? <laughs> I know. So with, from Kev's point of view, he's got the mini cane in the chair, so as you can see, he's gloating now, but as he comes through, mini cane, it's hard to get up here like this. So again, let the cane do the work onto there, Go and on. just ta. That's one all if you're counting. <laughs> Doesn't take a lot of pressure. So going back to our reverse javelin, you're covering, it's very, very difficult with an attack that's unexpected to stop it. So covering, you're going to get, negate most of the damage. Any altercation, you're going to get hurt. You're then ready for this strike. If you miss, we can go into the next point, but Kev's well, got something to say. This is one thing that we've had come up a bit. Um, we like everyone to have their own voice, but if Chris is going to attack me, go for the javelin, mate. Yeah. Right, I'm like, no. Already the hands are out. I'm not going to block this with my arms because it's going to hurt. But, as the end comes in, I am going to change body position. I am going to try and get him out of the way. Alright? Some people call these blocks. Some call them receiving techniques. Some call them a counter-attack. doesn't matter what you call them. You're going to do this. And some people say that you can't block things. You can intercept. Yeah. So let's just call it intercept for now, shall we? Yeah. In our karate system, 
Um, I'm going to shout at Callum, how many blocks in our system? One. One, correct. Correct. And it's actually a transitioning, wave-forming body strike or a block. But all our techniques, we don't tend to use blocks. Second point we're going to go for is the side of the neck. So if you're an aficionado, I really hate this one. Uh, stomach nine. Open hand techniques, gentle slaps. See, somebody's regretting showing me iron palm bag techniques now. Punching's great, but these gentle strikes are really nice. With the cane, oh, they are very, very nice, but I would not strike these areas with the cane at all. No. Very simple. If he comes in, say, it'd be better if I had Dan with me this week. But, it would be. But... So fake Dan throwing the punch. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is control him, and I'm going to bring my hand to my cane and squeeze my elbows together. I'm ready. You see, I'm, I'm ready to tap. <laughs> He wants to tap, I'm not going to do it, doesn't take a lot, we've covered this technique before, but it's a way of accessing that technique. If you are desperate with our close in stuff, you can just do a gentle swing and tap. A slight knock will give that, it gives you a burst of high blood pressure straight away and causes them to faint. It is a dangerous technique though. You'll find with our techniques that we're showing you, um, during my Kung Fu days, we was taught to have one move, that you practice every single time you wake up, whatever, and mine was this. That was my one move. So if you throw a punch, it's there. If I miss, and I'm here, I've still got control with the elbow. And again, remember this point here where we used to pull? Pull and slap at the same time. That's exactly the same area, and it doesn't take much. If you don't believe us, Sally's video from last, nearly two years ago now, yeah. She did a reverse punch, caught him just gently with an open hand on the back of the hand, and Chris and these, they were just buckled, didn't they? I was down. So, okay. it doesn't take a lot to actually hit these points. Yeah. Brings us on to the clavicle. On top of the, here, the traps you've got, gallbladder 21, and you've got the clavicle. This works really well on Dan, but you can't really see the effect here. This is a straight downward... <laughs> If you've got them, it makes your knees drop. <laughs> it <wins. laughs> yeah. It, it actually makes your body collapse. Is it my turn yet? It, it will be your turn in a second. So if you miss these points, you've got this point here. If you miss this point on the top here, you've got the collarbone. Very, very easy to break with one of these. And again, when we talk about our changing our grips to our canes as well, you can transition into other things as well. Nothing's really changed, so I'm still, I'm still going to cover, I'm going to charge in, I'm going to crash as I'm coming through. Am I going to be accurate? No. My adrenaline's going to be pumping, everything, my fine motor control's gone. Though I want a nice light controlled strike, I'll probably be coming in, screaming like a banshee, and going here. And the thing is, as we've said before, hips to toes, area one, hip, clavicle, area two, Anything above is area three. We do not hit area three. No. Because it is Dangerous. lethal. Yeah. But if you're coming down to someone's collarbone, the collarbone here keeps all your chest muscles and your shoulder in a line how it's supposed to be. If this breaks, these muscles contract, it shoulder comes forward, it drops down, and it becomes useless. You cannot lift that arm. So as soon as the aggressor comes in, you've hit a non-lethal area. If you break it, it's not going to go into a lung, it's not going to go into an artery. The subcavalian vein that comes right way through to the throat, you're not going to hit that. Because you're aiming downwards, it's going to break and it's going to come out. It's just literally going to pop. So you've literally taken away this part of their body. Very useful to, if you're in under attack. Works well with the hand. If I was to strike that very hard, yeah. If yeah, I was my to, turn. Hang on. <laughs> Calm down. If I was to do a relaxed strike down, that is much more devastating. So these relaxed techniques that we were talking about in the previous video, these are the key to making these successful. You need to write to Chris and ask him about the palm drag. No, you don't. Because <laughs> I'd love to demonstrate them on Chris. Go on then, pay back. With me, as you can see, even if I've got my arm, and I'm quite a tall guy, and I hit here, there's not going to really be that much. 
<laughs> Patronising. Exactly. But I've got a cane. Again, I'm reversing it. I'm coming into an area that's just literally, if Chris worked out, would hold on itself, but it doesn't work out. My chi energy is deflecting your measly cane. It's there. If I've hooked in, especially with the cane master canes that have got the, the little crooks at the end, I just tap with my hand. And that was so light, yeah. I didn't even follow the cane down. Chris moved down and the cane stayed put. It's an area that is uncomfortable to say the least. Yeah. And if he wants, he can drop down on gallbladder 21, nice vertical strike. Go on, do it. I say, with myself, I tend to, in the chair, I'm like this. It's almost like the 360 we showed you before, but I'm like this, and I'm gonna attack from there. But I'm gonna hit the collarbone, the collarbone and the chest. Because if I wanna hit the right angle, I've gotta be up here, and it's not for me. Personally, I like the crook out, and just doing that on it will just literally, it'll make them stop, it'll make them think. Why they've took a step back, they're thinking, I'm now in an offensive position rather than defensive. You're always offensive. I've heard. Right. Next one is one of Kev's favourites, the sternum. Or you've got the super sternal notch at the top. Very difficult to get your cane and drive it down in there, but it's always worth having a go. Yeah. Close in. Again, it's a fine point in a high pressure situation. Is it gonna work? Is it worth going for? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've seen us do this so often, into the chest, getting the cane, dragging the crook down, and doing a nice bayonet strike into there. It's a good area, and you can do it from close in as well. And that's a key thing. Remember the taps, guys? Just one finger. That's all it took. So you can imagine your adrenaline's pumping, you, they're in your face, and you just give it a whack. That's going to cause a lot of damage. Yeah. Big area as well. This is what you want. If you know pressure points, the ones we're talking about are larger areas and don't require... Finesse. Yeah. Some of the ones require rubbing, specific angles, etc. Yeah. Our next one's a nice favourite one. The floating rib, gallbladder oh. 26. It does not take a lot to put somebody out of action with this one. Right. Tip of the floating rib. No. No. That no. was an awesome flick. Chris is actually th taking into consideration the person standing. Yeah. I'm sitting. And you're padded. <laughs> is that my way of saying fat? I never said that. Because I'm sitting, my floating rib's here which was just literally about two inches, four to five centimetres. Six inches. Six inches. Mm. Oh, sorry, seven. <laughs> so mine's hidden because I am actually sitting forward. So my rib cage is compressed. And because of my posture, and I do get told off about this, I sit like this. Part of it's self-comfort, part of it's just lazy. So the area here, if I was to just He's gone. All right? If they're sitting or in a wheelchair, I don't think Chris could actually do a strike to hit you without no. being very, very accurate. Because you've got... I'd have to drive this in through. Yeah. Not a personal strike. If you strike somebody through, the aiming for the floating ribs and hit anywhere around here, it's going to be effective oh. regardless. That's just what we call an enhancer or a player. Yeah. Uh, with Kev, if I'm looming, I've, I'm actually presenting in these targets. I've got six areas there that I can go for yeah. and I get the same result in each area. Yeah. So, next one we're going to talk about is... Dun, dun, dun. The bladder. Oh. Now, Are you sure you want to do this one? Absolutely not. <laughs> now, we can, we've all... I'm not going to teach you how to groin flick. We've. If you need to be shown how to do that... I think women know it instantly. It's, it's a common, common thing, but a straightforward one. Driving down on top of the bladder, it does two things. <laughs> Neither which is pleasant. Now, if, we, if I was to drive that down in somebody in a chair, I'd probably get arrested for being mean to a person in a chair. But yeah, too right. Too right. But what you're looking for is, I'm here, belly button, anything below the belly button, you either want to drive down at a 45 degree angle, 
and that will cause bleeding, irritation, wetting yourself, the loads of pain. Yeah. If you drive it upwards, <sighs> it's what we call a puka. Yeah. But if Kev actually does this, so you've got this region here, another good 10 inches. Two fingers. I'm going to palpate, I'm going to find it. Two fingers. Oh! In the medical trade, two fingers, and you can listen to lungs and you can see if there's any fluid. That's it's not where my lungs are. <laughs> but as Chris said, the puker. Now, if he's coming at me, yeah. and all I'm doing is putting the crook of the cane in my chair, walk, go on, walk, walk, come yeah, on. Yeah, it's not going to work. <laughs> but again, if he's steaming at me, if he's got the ump, and he's coming in from a distance, I'm not going to sit there and go, come on then, come on! It's all going to be relative. After time, if he's trying to overpower me, yeah. which he comes in, I'm looking, I've got under the arms, got the side, the one I took Christmas, which was really nice, which is just a little bit of meat under the armpit, which he liked, the floater ribs, the bladder, sternum, ziffy sternum, cricoid process, clavicle, these are little things that, yeah. you know, you've got, if they're close. Um, works great if they're trying to hug you for some reason. Especially the float ribs. Mm. They come in and go, oh, I'm manly, I'm going to give you a strength. Yeah, take that. For revenge, give them a hug around the float and ribs with your cane. Ooh, that's nasty. Okay. Next two is the proverbial gallbladder 32. So if I stand here where my fingertips are, that's the point you're aiming for. On the inside of the thigh, spin 11, 12. So, whichever way, this both is, of those are very painful. This is known as a Charlie horse or a dead leg. You do that, activates the nerve up and down, really hard to walk. On the inside, just a small little tap, and you feel the little electricity go up. It, it's a very horrible strike <laughs> to have. Ladies, if a man comes in and they've got their legs spread and you don't want to give them a kick, Finger and thumb, spleen 11, squeeze and turn. So you're looking here. Yeah. If you take the femoral pulse, if you can find the femoral pulse, that's where you're aiming. That's the point you're looking for. But anywhere on the inside of the thigh, because you press the situation on, oh, I've got your pulse, don't get it. It's called a camel bite. And it's called a camel bite for a reason. It hurts. Yeah. And if you remember our gripping. <laughs> I have grip. never worked at a dairy. No. Just one that on film. Never worked at a dairy. Yep. You know who you are who said that. But again, on the leg, these are nice easy strikes. You don't need a lot of effort, but it's just a small, close in, tapping, you're getting a reaction, then you can move on to your next favourite technique. Thanks for watching guys, we hope you liked the video. As usual, stick your comments down below. We've had some lovely ones over the new year. Um, I've taken a little break over the festive period, so I will now get my backside back in work and I will answer all the comments that have come over this time. Yeah, someone's asked us to do some knife stuff. We are a little bit reluctant to do it. We may show some basic stuff, but we're waiting for our friendly expert to come down and do some good stuff with us. But it's not an area we like to sort of dabble into too much. Cause We'd rather have a professional come in. Yeah. Um, because although we, we've got our own personal things we use for knives, um, with the climate, with everything that's going on, we'd rather use someone that's got the qualifications, expertise and experience. Exactly. So please be on the lookout for that and hopefully that will come soon. Don't forget, smash that subscribe button. Don't forget to ring the bell. And, Kev can say it this week, free the Chris. He doesn't get better as he gets older. <laughs>